Welcome back to Full Circle Florida. Let's bring in our panel here this week. He's an author, a researcher, a USF political communications professor, and the founding director of the Center for Sustainable Democracy, Joshua Skako, back with us. And my partner in politics, the distinguished USF professor of political science, Dr. Susan McManus. All right, I'll start with the obvious. Why did Vice President Kamala Harris lose this race, and why was it not even close? That was the surprise, I think, for a lot of people. Well, we have to start with sort of, I think maybe we might have some similar and different kind of perspectives here. But one is that structurally, if you look worldwide right now, almost every incumbent government uh, internationally has been kicked out of office this year. And a lot of that has to do with what we're experiencing here at home inflationary scars, uh, prices, the costs of things. And so inflation uh, doesn't just touch the United States. COVID didn't just touch us as well. So that's, I think that's a big part of this. That's an interesting observation because you're right. I mean, Japan, major upheaval, uh, Argentina. I mean, you can point to Italy a couple of years ago. So it isn't just the United States. No, it's that's not seeing just the these kinds States. of changes. What, what do you make of that? I just make that when you don't understand the people that you're trying to campaign to, the number one problem in their life that they're hoping that government will help with, and that's inflation, the economy. Every poll we looked at for the last five or six months has showed that that was the number one issue, and it cut across all demographic groups, and the Democrats just never honed a message that really gave working class people any kind of comfort that they're that they were being heard. How do you how do you go with that? Because there are some that say that they should have uh, sold their the things that they positively did. Uh, the fact that unemployment is low. Some people argue they should have leaned into what they accomplished rather than pointing out the weaknesses. And others say, of course, you you break from Biden completely and look at the reality. You, of the you cannot stay with what they tried. That it didn't mm -hmm. work. Mm -hmm. And really, the strategy that they utilized when all was said and done, was to really push the abortion issue. Mm -hmm. And secondly, the other side of their strategy was just bash Trump at every single word and try to tell him, tar, tear him down. Mm -hmm. It did not that work. That clearly didn't work, Joshua. It, I mean, it, it didn't. And the other, I think Dr. McManus is, you know, hits it here that there seemed to be a lack of engagement with the issue that was on most people's minds. And when it was engaged, it seemed to be engaged in a very careful sort of manner, not to uh, potentially split apart elements of the Democratic coalition. And voters, I think, saw through that caution um, in terms of their inability to lean into at least acknowledging that people were hurting. Yeah, also going after so-called soft Republicans didn't seem to work either, the whole Cheney and, and all of that uh, stuff. But uh, the, the term divided country, it's been thrown around so much over the last, well, since 2016, really, when Trump came into office, that I think we're almost expecting these elections to be nail biters and take weeks. Obviously, that didn't happen this time around. You look at the electoral map, uh, and when the results uh, you know, settle in, we get the final tally, you know, he's going to have, Donald Trump will have possibly 312 electoral votes, winning the popular vote by maybe over 5 million people. So is it misleading to say that we're still this bitterly divided country with results like that? Here's the, here's the issue. It was the issue that binds people, mm -hmm. not the parties. But yet the national media tends to focus on the divisiveness and always contrast every single thing by Democrats versus Republicans. And we know very well that some states are more one party than the other. But what bound this election together was the e economic issue. We haven't seen a blowout like this in 20, 2004. I think you go back to the electoral count at least. Uh, or really we can go back to Barack Obama's victory in 2008. You can, yes, you can like, flip it to the other yeah, side. And Correct. There, and that was also under economic circumstances of what you saw. And no one said we're so divided, right? Yeah, I mean, right. maybe a little bit, but it wasn't like this crisis. We're so divided, we're gonna have a civil war. No one did that after No, and I think Barack we need Obama. to look at it as well as if you look at the state-by-state -state results, really the state-by-state -state results in a lot of ways align with the polls coming into this. They're, each of these states are gonna be decided, these battlegrounds are gonna be decided by about two points. So they just all shifted in the same direction. And so when you get that sort of sweep, you get this much more dramatic effect in terms of what you get in terms of results. So what do the Democrats have to do? First of all, they've got to do 
a deep dive look at what went wrong with their communications because their messaging was not connecting with everyday people. But secondly, and this is a big problem, they did not look at the changing demographic makeup of this country in a lot of places. And they just assumed that there was this cohesiveness. Oh, the women's vote, or oh, the young people's vote, oh, or this, that, or the other. But in fact, even in Florida, it was a good example. The women's vote was split on a lot of things. The same thing with young people, the same thing with minorities. You take an inventory in a postmortem, but wasn't a lot of this like Biden falling off the stage and it was just total chaos and she had three months to run and you're just not going to do. So when you look that. at these types of postmortems and I've, you know, on campaigns that I've worked on previously many years ago, uh, you do this sort of postmortem analysis where you look at the structural factors that were kind of outside of your control, how you tried to control them, and then you look at the campaign specific factors. I do think there will be campaign specific factors that Democrats can look to here. And I, I think we also need to think about that the Democrats have tried to get away for a long time believing that demographics are destiny. Mm. And I think they still believe that inherently, that ultimately a changing America will mean that it's going to pre present them an inherent advantage. And it's not. And campaigning is still going to matter. They're still going to have to persuade particular groups. I think st they've really lost the working class. Yeah. Well, and they admitted everything we're reading right now. They were once the party of the working class, but they're far from that now. And the Republicans benefited from ad addressing and really campaigning to the working class. Let me ask you this. Does Trump have a mandate here? Or is it always that perception that you feel like if you win the Senate and, and perhaps they'll win the House, um, that you overdo it? And in two years, there's a reckoning the other way. I don't want to lean into the language of mandate here, and I think part of that is because we are still a very closely divided country. Even when you look at the results in the aggregate, it's still closely divided. Um, now, I don't think any political leader in Donald Trump's circumstance would look at it the opposite way and say, right. yes, I do have a mandate. And He's got a lot of power. Right? And, that's, and that's going to be his right. He was elected. So in terms of what he does with that power, it's going to be up to everyone who voted for him and who didn't vote for him to really hold our leaders accountable in terms of how they exercise. Does he power. have unchecked power? Because that's the concern with the Supreme Court, the ruling. Well, that's mean, always been a concern of that. But let me tell you what matters. He does have a mandate if you look at it, you know, winning the popular vote and the electoral vote that much and winning both chambers. But if you win like that, you better quickly get something done. Got to deliver. So he's got to deliver. And we know from history, history that if you're going to make drastic change in a new administration, it has to be within the first year or so. The media, and I hate to use that term because it's so ubiquitous, and anyone with <laughs> a phone and an ex-account is Twitter, but uh, specifically CNN, MSNBC, the 24-hour networks that have to fill that beast every day, I feel like are at a tough spot. You can't be state media and Trump's PR firm. You have a job to do. But you also can't be in freak out mode 24 seven every time the president tweets something that is unconventional. We know who he is. So you can't be sort of covering it like every day the house is on fire. So I just wonder how that might play out. If we look at how journalists got it, I would argue wrong the first time in the first Trump administration. It was the outrage. They went for the outrage because they knew it would bring in clicks, they would bring in eyeballs and those particular types of things. If they shift focus and they really think about, okay, we know that Donald Trump is going to say things that would seem outrageous, but then look at which parts of what he says are really potentially threatening to democracy, for instance. Like, right. where can they make that line and and can they actually deliver in terms of conveying that to the Pick your question. But one of the yeah. reasons that the Democrats are saying that they lost was that they used traditional media. And meanwhile, the Trump campaign, which was criticized for not doing more grassroots stuff, yeah. they were making out like bandits online. The media is changing. All right, next on Full Circle Florida, our final thoughts on this historic week and what to watch for in the crucial weeks ahead. Stay with us.